love to dwell It's the presence of my Father All the host of heaven gather Worshiping, bowing down before Him Of 
appreciate it. Thank you guys for your patience again. I love you. I'm excited to be with you. And I greet you all in the beautiful name of our wonderful Jesus. <clears throat> and if you can hear as well, put a thumbs up in the chat. John's mic should be working well today. We got that fixed by God's grace, so we'll find out here in a little bit. But let's just start with myself. If you can hear as well, put a thumbs up in the chat. And let's, let's just kind of get this thing going with God's grace. Oh, Kevin, I love you. Bless you. Alex, bless you. Emily, God bless you. Dominique, Justin, Nina Bean, and Carl Thomas. My Adrian, Jordan Johnson, what's up, my brother? I love you. Bless you. Hey, my beautiful Diamond, Brando. Misha Ray, God bless you. Hey, Nikki. Ty, I love you, man of God. Zion, my little brother, MG. Joe, stay safe on the road. Oh, Sean O'Dell. <laughs> I love you, Sean. Oh, Shonda. Farah, love you all. Bless you, Olivia. Hey, Brianna. Patience, my old little shoe. Elder Ashton, I love you, my brother. Y'all 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 tripping already. So now today's what day two? Or today's day one or two? Day two. Today's day one of fasting, but day two because we teach them for four days. So day one of fasting, but day two of the teachings. So I'm grateful to God to be able to serve you and the capacity. Thank you for your patience. I was writing a few things down. I was taking them out of one notebook and putting them in another so that way I didn't have a chance. To, I've been gone all day, so it wasn't like I got a chance to speak with Felicia. Normally, if there's something definitive that I need to share that God's like, say these things, I'll have to tell somebody like, hey, don't let me forget to say, I'll tell Felicia, hey, don't let me forget to say X, Y, and Z. But I didn't get a chance to do that today. So I was writing things from out of things that I've learned. I was writing them down. So that way I could actually look at them to make sure that I don't forget. So thank you guys for your patience in that. Because, and um, man of something that's a, it's not many examples of manner within the scriptures. However, there's a lot to it for people who have certain experiences. So I didn't want to go down a rabbit trail and then forget everything I was supposed to talk about. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was taking the time to, to write it down. Amen. Amen. Excellent. So I hope you guys were blessed this morning um, during the small devotion time and hopefully you guys got a chance to participate in the midday prayer. If your schedules allowed you to, I wasn't able to, but I know it was excellent. So hopefully you guys were blessed by that and she'll do that again tomorrow sometime, whatever time she hop on there, but uh, I'll be present in the morning also and that'll be good. And then after we talk about this today, at some point in time, I'm going to uh, teach communion on Telegram after we talk about this so that way people can understand what it truly is and how to truly, how to truly position themselves to receive from God. Okay. Hey, send me a um, send me a message on um, Instagram, and I get a lot of messages. So you gotta just work with me. It it have to work back to the top. I'm not certain. <laughs> Starting already. <laughs> Starting already. <laughs> we couldn't even <laughs> couldn't even get going. Esco, love you. Okay, won't give Felicia a second to get herself together. Why is she doing that? I know a place. It's the presence of my father. All the host of heaven gathers. We worship him. Bowing down before him. Now, some people were messaging me on Instagram asking me in regards to the fast. So, for those who didn't know, I'm trying to chew in your ear. 
I'm trying to figure out the same thing. She said, why they laughing? I don't have a clue. It's like, I'm sorry. But apparently her and Janika got like a thing going on. I'm so sorry. We're going to separate them from now on. Y'all give Felicia a second to get herself together. Her, her and Janika got to laugh, the giggles now. Oh, hey, hey, mute the microphone real quick, please. Right, sorry about that, you guys. My apologies. Now, some people were asking me in regards to the fast. And these are the guidelines for those who are unaware. We're fasting from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. During that time, fasting means we're not eating anything. Mm -hmm. We're also not drinking any coffee, drinking any tea, drinking any energy drinks. The only thing that we're consuming is water. Okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm about to put you off. <laughs> I would hate to have to do that. <laughs> she on her way. <laughs> I'm listening. Um, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Oh my God. You know when the teacher got that one student that they're really rooting for? <laughs> <laughs> like they're really rooting for. <laughs> and then they end up like, listen, this is going to hurt me more. It's going to hurt you. <laughs> we coming real close to that window right now. I feel it. I feel it. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I really am. I really am. Cause then I'm gonna flip that switch. This like, oh no. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, like I said, the fast is gonna be from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. During that time, we're not consuming anything. Then, after 6 p.m., you're welcome to eat. However, when I say we're not having fun, meaning don't go get a double cheeseburger, don't go get a stuffed crust pizza, don't go to Morton's and get a steak. You're eating for substance, but not for pleasure. Mm. That's what that means. You're eating for substance, but not for pleasure. <laughs> because food is pleasurable. Mm -hmm. However, if you eat for pleasure, you will undo everything that you are working towards during that time of fasting. Mm -hmm. He said, dang, I had a Gatorade at work. However, if you work physical labor, mm -hmm. right, we're not holding you to the same stringent guidelines. Meaning if you want to have a Gatorade, if you need to have an energy drink, if you need to have something when you start prior before to that. We're, we're not Nazis over here. But if you type in at a keyboard all day, like the water will carry you over for that eight hours or however long. Amen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, that's the fasting. The times that we pray in the morning is based upon whatever Felicia chooses. So, you know, I don't have a set guideline for that. And then the devotion or the midday prayer is typically around lunchtime. 
because the purpose in prayer and fasting is that there will be prayer with the fasting. Not that you just, and if you're on medications, mm -hmm. take your medicine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Carl, I saw he said he was on antibiotics. If you're taking medication that's prescribed, not that you're taking the Tylenol, but if you're taking medis medication, what'd you say? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. If you're taking medica medication that's prescribed, go ahead and eat something. <clears throat> like, they prescribed the medicine with the intent that you would have some on your stomach. Yeah. So it's not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Even in taking medication, don't go have a bunch of fun, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He'd be like, oh, yeah, let me just, you know, I got to take this medicine. No, yeah. don't, don't cut up like that. But do do that. And then for everyone else, if your local churches... And I'm speaking to a specific group of people. I'm not talking to the Food for Tree people. I'm speaking to other people that I know listen. If your local leaders are doing something, your local churches are doing something, all of the sorts and fellowship falls in that lines, don't talk about you fasting. One, the fasting is at 6 p.m., which means there's plenty of time to eat with your peers, with your leader, all that kind of stuff. So what I'm saying is don't use my name as a scapegoat. Hey, right? That's really what I'm saying when I say that. Don't use my credibility as a scapegoat to not fellowship with someone. Don't use my name as credibility or a scapegoat to not do what someone's telling you to do. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Because I don't want to, um, it's not going to be nice if I, if we got to go back down that road again. Okay? Don't do that. So that's that in regards to the fasting. Now, yesterday, I pray you guys were able to receive in light of God dwelling in man. Because when God dwells in a man, what you don't understand is that that man now becomes a representative of God, even in light of some of the flaws. Mm -hmm. I know that's hard for people to swallow, mm -hmm. but even in light of some of the flaws, that man becomes a representative of God. Mm -hmm. Okay? And not only does that man become a representative of God, that man becomes a place of God. Mm -hmm. That's something that's not heard often, but man... When God is truly working in him, that man becomes a location. Mm. What do I mean when I say that man becomes a location? That man now becomes a place where you can find God. Mm -hmm. And the reason that man becomes a location is because everybody can't, you can't find it in everybody. Mm -hmm. Kind of like when the woman needed her oil to continue, Elisha was the only person that could bring that location to her. Mm -hmm. You see? So it wasn't, <coughs> there were lots of prophets, but only one prophet could give her that. <clears throat> when Elijah is sustained, there's a location where he is sustained by. It isn't that he's just sustained. He's in a certain location where he's sustained by. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is when God begins to dwell in a man, that man doesn't just become a man, but that man becomes a location. And when that man becomes a location, he now becomes the place that God would draw men to also. God is drawing men to himself. But a lot of times God will put cherished things inside of men and the only way to access it is for people to now have to come to that location, mm -hmm. meaning that person. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. She asked, is the video stopping? I hope it's not stopping for anybody else. Hopefully not. Oh, the time we're done already? Well, that, that doesn't count because it was... um. What do you mean? Is it more than gifting? I don't understand the question. You know how someone say, um, oh, someone's just highly gifted. If someone's highly gifted, is that that's an is that an indication that God has selected them to be a location? If someone is highly gifted, not necessarily. Okay. Gifting doesn't equate to location <laughs> all the time, mm -hmm. right? Because gifts can be without repentance also. So gifting doesn't mean that a man's a location. However, there will be a certain display mm -hmm. with the man that God is inside of that will prove that that man is a location. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like of a lot of things that were happening in the world, there was only one Benson Hosa. And there was only one place you could find him wherever he was. <coughs> he became a location. Mm -hmm. You see? There was only one Maria Woodward at, her, at that time. There were plenty of traveling evangelists. There were plenty of local pastors. There were plenty of that, but there was only one Maria Woodward at her at that time. She became a location. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. There were plenty of prophets inside of the day, but there's only one prophet, Lord. Mm -hmm. Men can become a location. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. 
there was plenty of men of God in that day, but there was only one Smith Wigglesworth. Mm-hmm. Now, Smith Wigglesworth had great desires, and a lot of times what people don't know about even Smith Wigglesworth is Smith Wigglesworth raised up great men that were right there with him. So I used to think, until I learned more about his story, that he didn't raise up any successors. That's what I used to think. But he did a good job in raising up certain men that also raised up other men. So then it wasn't just about that one person. Mm-hmm. So Smith Wigglesworth became a location. Mm-hmm. Now you have to understand that that's God's desire for you also. That you too will become a location. Mm-hmm. You too will become a location. You too would become a location. Mm-hmm. That you too would be the place where the river of God flows to. That you too will be the place from out where the river of God flows from. That's why he says that you are the light of the world, a city set on top of a hill. A city is a location. You understand what I'm saying? So you read it and you just you just say it and pass it. If you just say it quickly and you read it quickly, you don't understand what God is saying. God is saying you are the light of the world. You are a city on top of a hill. Now, the type of location that you become is based upon how you build yourself up. The type of location that you become is based upon how you build yourself up. You can have a city. Remember we talked about it a little bit and I said the difference between an advanced, technologically advanced city and a village is its systems and its structures. So based upon the systems and the structures that you have determine what type of city you will be. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Based upon the system and the structure that you have determine the type of location that you will be. Will you be a village or will you be a city full of light? Mm. Will you be technologically advanced spiritually or will you be third world? Ooh. It's based upon the building up that you have done. Amen. You understand? Yeah. So the word of God tells us what? That you are the light of the world, a city set on a hill. Based upon how one is built up determines how they will exist. Will you be a city that every man can see, a location, or will you be something that others cannot see? Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with being something that others cannot see either. Mm -hmm. However, if God has so much more, you have to be willing to do the work necessary to be built up and edified and exhorted up into the place that you become a strong (coughs) city also. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. The Word of God even likens men to strong towers in certain places. Mm -hmm. That's because it can be built upon. Mm -hmm. You understand? Now, in light of that, you have to understand that God, when he works inside of man, he then in turn makes man a location. When he makes man a location, all man has to do if they want to access God is access that man. I know that's hard for some people to process, but all a person has to do when they want to access God is access that man. And if they can access that man, they've now accessed the location. That, ac- that, that access to that location is based upon God inside of that man. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. That's why Paul would say what? Building yourselves up. He didn't say building yourselves. He said building yourselves <clears throat> upward mm-hmm. in your most holy faith. Now, if you, if you read it at surface level, it's just like, oh, yeah, you're building yourself up in your most holy faith, Right? He said that reminds me of Samuel this year. Exactly. What did they say about Samuel? They said, let us go up unto Samuel, the seer, who is a prophet. They said, let us go up unto Samuel, the seer, who is a prophet. And he will tell us the information that we're looking for. Of everybody that was existing, there was one man who was a location. And when they went to him, they could find what they were looking for. You understand? Now it says that what I was saying right before that was building yourselves upward in your most holy faith. Building yourselves upward in your most holy faith. What that means in its essence, in its form, is that taking your edifice and allowing it to be built up. Mm -hmm. And if you understand what an edifice is, it's a structure. It's a building. It's something that stands to exist Mm -hmm. for others to see. You understand what I'm saying? So when it says building yourself up in your most holy faith, 
you don't realize that you just think you're just doing something. When you see me, I'm building up my structure. You understand what I'm saying? That's what's happening. I'm not just, and not just me, I'm using, you see other men. When you see it, what's happening? There's a structure that's being built, you just can't see it. There's a system that's being accessed, you just can't see it. There's a framework and a highway that I'm tapping into that you just can't see it. Why? Because I'm a city. I'm moving through the systems and the structures. Does that make sense? Yes. You become a man, a city set on a hill. So that just helps you understand that these, listen, these scriptures are filled with the access points to give us the ability to become everything God has for us if we just take our time. You are the light of a world, a city set on a hill. You never thought for one second to say, man, I am a city. Mm. I know it because I've never heard you say it. So I'm not downing anyone, but I've never said, I am a city. I am an edifice. I am a building. I am a structure. Every man can see me because I am a location. Mm. You understand? Yes. So I'm helping you better understand God and a man. When God is in a man, he becomes a structure. When God is in a man, he begins to have systems and structures that make him a city. When he becomes a city, you can either have a little small apartment on top of that hill or you can have a big skyscraper. It's all based upon how much you want to build yourself up. You understand? Yes. Building yourself upward in your most holy faith. You can have a little slum village or you can have a skyscraper high in the sky. God will let you have it. It's all based upon what you're willing to do. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. He said, dang. So our arms and prayer can build a structure before God and we ourselves can be a structure. What did it say the arms did what? The arms came up. They're moving up a framework. Mm. I'll tell you, one day, if you allow to see, there's all kinds of structures and things that exist within the spirit that look very much like construction. They look very much like construction. So building yourselves up in your most holy faith. That's an edifice that is being erected. That's an edifice that's being lifted up. That's an edifice that's being built up. You are a city. So when God wants to work in a man, you can walk with God in such a way that he walks in you and you become a location. Where now, men can't find what they're looking for. They just come to you. Because God wasn't answering Hannah. But she kept going to the location because she knew if I can find the man here, he can become a location for me. Wow. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. She kept coming to a certain place, but it was in a certain location that there she received answers from God. Yes. Ask yourself, am I a location for God? Mm. And if you want, you can be. You are a city set on a hill. Sorry for tuning out here. You're a city set on a hill. This will help you be more. Remember I said everything inside of the spirit is done with intention. Mm -hmm. There is nothing that's done haphazardly. Now you will better understand when I say, hey, everyone praying in tongues. You understand what I'm saying? I'm saying build yourself up. Make yourself a city. That's what I'm saying. What I'm saying is let us build together because we become even greater than a city when all of our structures link up together. Yes. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. We become greater when we link up together. YouTube, are you there? Are you a city? Do you understand? That's why Jesus is the chief cornerstone. Excellent. Why? Because it's a building. It's a structure. No, you're not that you are the temple. That's a structure. A 
it's an edifice, it's a building, it's a facility. Excellent, oh, that's, I'm a big city. Holy. Take a few minutes and let's pray in the language of the spirit. Notice I didn't say pray in the spirit, pray in the language of the spirit because you can pray in the spirit without praying in tongues. Does that make sense? Let's take a few minutes. Let's bubble ourselves up. Let's pray in the language of the Spirit. Bronta mando zon takanda brande beketebe. Reden laiden is konto fronte melevo. Banton televon kabranta lava. Bas ton ton le melevon zon ton bradas katabradi. Ma fondante le bons anton kabrate kerebe. Mis talama, be perro non telebe. Be zonton to ferro nos telebe. Mando repiti lo fu ute. Ba ferro non telebe. Bambando zonto. Me keron tu luvun de breti. Bam ponton donush talama. Vomba zon telebe brondo zonton tabababa. Pray, build yourself up. You are a city. You are a city on a hill. Build yourself up. Establish your edifice. Build yourself up. Ma fero non televe. Reden le do zonton be le vonton me zonton de brambon de leve. Gigor ronun de gebe anto le fon te pretus talama. Luna mani siki. Luna mani siki kilebe. Bluna mana seki kili biki, o seki na makande le moku, le seki kina makande le seku ku, bluna mana le seki, bluna me seki kuli bi, le na makande le seki kuli bi, lu se kandi biki kuli bi, bluna makande le seki ku. Rangu gunda baga, zonto zebro onde ipalagos, pefero nafra monde, Jesus se ele bronto bo, mi palaman primonte de monta bra. Bebo bozon to toko raba, mazo medete, reto lebe, bando zo koto, ora manda baba, ze ferro no taba, bange gege gebo do zo koto bo. Brento Bontalaba Pata Fahaka no teke Presto na hokate Presta na hokate Presta na hokate Mate filaba Rakanush kata meleve 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Watch this. Build up that city, that edifice, that structure, that system, because you are a city that is set on a hill. Amen. 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 Now that has absolutely nothing to do with manna from heaven, but we were recapping yesterday and ended up going down that vein for a second. So eventually, hopefully before the month is out or somewhere very soon, I'm going to teach about streams and rivers. The streams and the rivers. That's just a stream. That has nothing to do with what we're doing right now but it's still in the family. Mm-hmm. It's a stream, and the streams and the streams flow onto the rivers, and the rivers have tributaries that flow onto it. All of it flowing onto the river of God. Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 All of it has to work together. Mm-hmm. All of it has to work together. When the Lord says that, from out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. That's for your location. From you shall flow this. That's because you're a location. Every river has different properties. So there's sometimes that river flows and that river's bringing a stream of deliverance. There's sometimes that river flows and that river's bringing a stream of the spirit of the prophets that sent me, the spirit of prophecy. There's sometimes that river flows and it's bringing a spirit of understanding or the spirit of revelation. But that's because that river is a location. If you can under, truly understand and not just do these things haphazardly, but with intention, you will understand that God has made you a location. From you shall flow. Yes. You understand? That's because you're a location. The river of God that exists within man, that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water, is literally that those same rivers that are inside of that belly, which is not your physical belly, but meaning the very core, a center of a man's being, those same rivers are the same rivers that are before the throne of God. Yes. So if you understand that those rivers are the rivers that are before the throne of God, that's a location. Mm-hmm. And you can stand calm and say, I am a location. Yes. You understand? Yes. But if you're not aware that your location, you can't just have deliverance that flows from you freely. Mm-hmm. If you're not aware that your location, prophecy doesn't flow from you freely. Mm-hmm. Teaching doesn't. That's why the teaching grace is so easy. Why? Because I tap into my own location. Mm-hmm. Yes. You understand? Yes. When it's time for deliverance, I'm a location. That stream just comes right out. That's because every man is a location. It's kind of like when I said, every man of God, when I address a man of God, a woman of God, even if they're not, you okay? Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> even if they're not, I'm prophesying it over them. Yeah. Even if they're not, I'm prophesying it over them. So even when you say it over yourself, even if you're not a location, you will become a location. Yes. yes. You understand? Yes. You can have what you say. Yes. yes. That's what Joel said. He said, this is my Bible, and I can have what it says I can have. Yes, sir. <laughs> or I can be what it says I am. I am a location. Yes. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's, when you understand the rivers, you'll understand the significance. Ezekiel, it isn't until he's by a specific river that he begins to receive insight and revelation. There are plenty of rivers, but it isn't until he's by a specific river. Why? Because that river is a location. Mm-hmm. The specific, I'll teach you about Ezekiel sometime this year, but the specific river that Ezekiel is by, the contributing river that made that river, that river was the river of Eden. Mm-hmm. So there's spiritual thing. There, there's more moving parts than what people can see. The river that Ezekiel was by, there were contr- or what we call tributaries or rivers that flow onto one another. The river that fed that river was eaten. So even when you're looking for a river, you have to ask yourself, what river is feeding this river? Mm-hmm. Check the source. Mm-hmm. Check the source. You know I said? Father means, father isn't gender, father means source. Mm-hmm. Check the source. What's feeding this river? Amen? Mm-hmm. 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 
My bad. Now, in light of manna from heaven, <laughs> let's see if we can. It's probably unlikely we'll get through it in that time, but let's just kind of see. And then, how long have we been going so far? Oh, we good. It's only nine o'clock. We got like three miles to midnight. Well, never mind. Felicia said no, so we'll finish it up with this. Is done. I'm sorry. Right. Now, um, thing I just said. <laughs> no, her um said a lot more than um. <laughs> <laughs> when you become a location you can tarry in the presence of God mm-hmm. you can tarry. No, prophesy, you, prophesy. <laughs> 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 you, you speaking over yourself yes, yes. She said, do evil men have a river? I don't know. I can't speak for them. I can only speak for the children of God. There is a river that makes glad what? The city of our God. All right. (laughs) You know that whole city thing? There's a river that makes glad a city. Cities don't become glad. People become glad. Cities don't have emotions. There is a river that makes glad the city of our God. Cities don't have emotions. People have emotions. That's because God has made his people a city. You are the light of the world, a city set on a hill. See see how the whole thing works together? Yeah, amen. Yeah, God's not ever missing his words. Now, (laughs) Kev said, bro, it's right. You'd be surprised at things that are right there. (laughs) All you have to do is say, Father, open my understanding. Remember, understanding is not based upon your own strength. Understanding is a spirit that comes from God. There's carnal understanding, which is a man's wisdom, but that's not enough. Understanding is a spirit that comes from God. Amen? Amen. Now, because Felicia wasn't feeling the um, going longer, what we'll do is we'll just we'll start talking about man and let's just see where we go. Amen? Excellent. So, John, um, find me and John. John, find me in the Gospel of John. Where he talks about when Jesus speaks about himself by how he is the living bread. You are the living bread. Mm-hmm. Name above names. Let me that's the name right now. Good. He told me to do that. Should be John six. Janika, while he's looking at, find him the passage of scripture that talks about even the dogs eat the crumbs from the table. So that way John doesn't have to look for that also. John, it's John chapter 6. I should be around the 50th verse. He is. <clears throat> John chapter 6, starting at verse 41. Mm-hmm. The Jews then complain about him because he said. Hold on one second. If y'all can hear John good. <clears throat> Put a thumbs up in the chat. We want to make sure that um, it's better than yesterday. Any river questions, just hold on to them since we done moved on from that. And uh, I'll answer them when we teach rivers and streams. Hey, Melissa, bless you. All right, now we can get a read in there. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, the cable was bad, so we got that we got that cable situated and fixed. That was my my apologies about that. The cable has shorted out because that's what happens when you let your children in the studio. But that's neither here nor there. Oh. <laughs> go, <laughs> go ahead, Janika, hit him off. And the word of the Lord declares. Come on, somebody. Read. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> the Jews then complain about him <clears throat> because he said. I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he says, I have come down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said to them, I mean, that's because they don't know what they're looking at. They said, Is not this the same Jesus? <clears throat> Remember, Peter told him, Look at me. 
You're looking with the wrong set of eyes. Look again. Go ahead, keep reading. Jesus therefore answered and said to them, Do not murmur among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. So is it possible to come to God? No. Not on your own. No. Okay. No one can come to the Father. No one can come to me, excuse me, except the Father draws him. Yes. This helps us understand you didn't choose Jesus. The Father chose you. Yes. yes. Yeah, I gave my, I, I got saved. In, no, no, no. God saved you. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, I got saved. I gave my life to God when I was. No. God gave you his son's life. You see the difference in language? Yes. The difference in language makes a big difference. You didn't choose God. He chose you. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, you didn't choose me, but I chose you that you. Amen? Yes. All right. Go ahead. And I will raise him up at the last day. Yes. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Mm -hmm. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Yes. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. So he says what? I am the bread of life. Your forefathers ate manna in the wilderness Yet they are dead. But that bread that they received could not keep them. He's telling you that the bread that I have, which is me, any man who partakes of this will never die. Right? So that's so much for dying. Remember I said that death is just a simply a transition from one state of existence to the next? Yeah. Jesus is telling us here, if any man partakes of me, which is the bread of life, he will have eternal life. Go ahead, keep reading. This is the bread which comes down from heaven. Hold on. Uh, what happened before? I missed what happened before, Carl. But Kevin said, I had someone tell me one time that they were a third generation Christian. So much for being a born Christian. Oh. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> hey, but they are third generation Christians. His name is Timothy. Mm -hmm. He said, the faith that was in your mother Lois and your grandmother Eunice, so shall the same faith, so as the same faith has been imparted into you. I remind you of that faith. He was third generation. Yes. It's just the totality of it or the wholeness of it we understand is that man doesn't choose God. God chooses his man. Yes. So Timothy is a third generation Christian, but he's a third generation because God chose him, not the other way around. Yes. So it's like I teach my children, no, God chose you. You can't do that. You understand? Yes. Amen. I don't want to discount or diminish because God has generations like that. I know a family like that. Mm -hmm. I know I know a legit family like that. That let me see. I'm first born. No. There's six generation Christians. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about a family that's filled with purity, righteousness, holiness. I'm talking about a family that's a city on a hill. Mm -hmm. Six generations. And I'm talking you don't have a trace of sexual immorality in their family. You don't have a trace of scandal. You don't have a, I'm talking, I'm talking pure. So I, I, that's why I want, I don't want to discount that. However, I'm also understanding when the person's like, yeah, I've been saved since I was born. Probably not. <laughs> right. So it's two sides to it, but I just didn't want to discount that. Yes. But it is possible. Go ahead, John. I am the living bread, which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that so I... bread came from where? I am the living bread which came from down heaven. from heaven. Yes. If anyone eats this bread, he shall live forever. So there's that for dying. He said, if you eat this bread which comes from heaven, you live forever. Go ahead, keep reading. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh which I should give for the life of the world. Perfect. Thank you. So the bread which he gives is his flesh. This is why Jesus was going, at the time they were speaking that how he was into cannibalism, because Jesus went on to say, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, 
you have no life in you. That's what Jesus told him. He said, listen, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you yourself, there is no life inside of you. Now, understanding that the bread which comes from heaven, there are so many moving dynamics inside of it that we don't always understand because then he likened his body to bread. But then he also likened healing to bread. That's why I actually give that scripture to John for me that I asked you to find. He likened his healing to bread also because then he said that, don't you know that deliverance or healing is the children's bread? which means that there are provisions that come from heaven. Those provisions are bread. There are different provisions that come from heaven. At another point in time, we'll talk more in detail about the provisions of heaven. But the provisions of heaven are all by virtue of what is fed to you. You've heard me teach some about there are certain things that when men have heavenly encounters that they get to eat and partake of. There are certain things that I've had and it was a provision. That provision in turn gives you a certain thing. There are certain things that men partake of that give them revelation. There are certain things that men partake of that give them the grace for wealth. There are certain things that men take of that give them the grace for judgment. There are different things. That's why even when John was caught up, he says, take this whole scroll and partake of it. That partaking was spiritual, yet it was a provision that gave him something. You understand? You see that often with the prophets when they'll be caught up and then it says, Take this and partake of it or take this, eat the whole thing. It'll be sweet to your taste, but it will be bitter to your stomach or it'll be sweet to your tongue, but it will be bitter going down. Mm -hmm. There's provisions that are with heaven. And one of the ways that he gets certain things to us is what he gives us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Carl remembered it well. He who sets the table is the one who controls the impartation. Mm -hmm. He who sets the table is the one who controls the impartation. That's why. We as prophets, we as men of God, we as those as servants of God, we're nothing more than servants. We don't determine the table, we serve the table. You see the difference? Yes. We don't determine the table, we serve the table. What he gives us to give, we give. Kind of like if you saw me writing before, it's because there were certain things he wanted me to make sure I talk about. Why? Because I'm just serving the table. He's the one who sets it. Yes. Amen? Excellent. Like the, what's that mean? Oh, yes, yes, amen, amen. You're right. I was like, huh? Yes, you're exactly right. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, John. So we're looking at Matthew chapter 15. Thank you. Start on verse 21. Then Jesus went out from there and departed from the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from, the re came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Jesus said, I'm only called to a certain group of people. <clears throat> we would have a problem if a certain person said, I'm called to this group. Jesus said, I'm called to a specific group of people. I remember having a conversation with someone and they were talking about, yeah, we had to be very careful because the type of person that's listening to it, I said, man, unfortunately with the internet today, I can't control who listens. However, I'm called to a specific group of people. Yes. I said, of course, some, some stuff falls into the net, but that's why you catch it and you buy it, throw this out, keep this, keep this, keep this, throw this out, keep this, keep this, keep this. That's the process of fishing. But you can't control what comes to the net. You control what you keep. Yes. You understand? But that's hard to process because God didn't call certain. If a man is fishing for salmon, he's not trying to keep trout. Mm. Yes. You understand? Just very help people understand. I'm fishing and building a certain net that's for a certain group of people that God called me to serve. I understand the restaurant that he set me in. Everyone that eats at a five star restaurant ain't the same group of people that's going to eat at McDonald's. Two different groups of people. Although the person at the five-star restaurant has the ability to go eat at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. But the person eating at McDonald's may not belong in the five-star restaurant. Mm -hmm. You see the difference? Yeah. The person that I'm speaking to can translate all bounds. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Let us know after you. 
Okay, all right. That's right. Amen. I, I just want to have help the saints. <laughs> yep, yep. Go ahead, John. Can pick back up. But Jesus wasn't called to everybody. Mm -hmm. Yes. But his sons were. Mm -hmm. I'm not called to everybody. Amen. The people connected to me are. Amen. Go ahead. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord. Maybe she worshipped him after he told her no? Mm -hmm. Imagine that. Go saying, ahead. Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Perfect. So Jesus is likening healing to bread. He's even, and she even understands the revelation. So she says, well, even the dogs, even the small dogs can partake in the crumbs. Even the smaller dogs get to partake in the crumbs. So she's saying, okay, I may not be able to get bread, but I can get a piece. Mm. Jesus understands that in order for you to receive healing, it takes great faith. Mm -hmm. Because then he likens her pursuit of that same bread to her having great faith. Mm -hmm. So in order to receive great bread, you need great faith. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. In order to receive the manna, which comes from God, you too also have to have great faith. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now he likens that bread to healing. <laughs> And then Paul helps us better understand that because Paul then goes on when he begins to set in order what we understand is the Lord's Supper. He says, I came to set in order. Mm -hmm. uh, Janika, help John find that for me when Paul established the Lord's Supper. He said, and he goes on to talk about how he received it. Now, I'm sorry, y'all. The Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper. But as Paul is receiving... And as he has received, excuse me, the Lord's Supper, when he begins to set it in order within the church, Paul tells him that this is something that I have received. There's a big difference between receiving something and reading something. Okay? Mm -hmm. He didn't say this is something that I've learned. Mm -hmm. He said this is something that I've received. Now, what you have to understand is that there's levels even inside the teachings where it goes from being taught mm -hmm. to you learning mm -hmm. to you receiving. Mm -hmm. Most people never get into receiving because they never steward what they were taught. Mm -hmm. Literally. Mm -hmm. Most people never grow down into the depths of receiving something because they've never even been a steward of what they've been taught. Paul doesn't tell us about what he's been taught. He tells us about what he has received. Mm -hmm. And in light of what he has received you and I are still implementing the Lord's Supper to this day because of what another man received. Mm -hmm. Now, the apostles didn't tell us anything about communion. The only thing we have is that the Lord at his last supper then took the bread broken and said, this is my body which has been broken for you. Then he took the wine and passed. That's all we have. But Paul helped us understand that I also have received from God. And then he goes on to teach us about the Lord's Supper. You got it? Yes. Go ahead. First Corinthians chapter 11, start verse 17. Thank you. Now, in giving these instructions, I do not praise you. I just knew Corinthians, but I didn't know where it was at in Corinthians. <laughs> I do not praise you, since you come together not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are division among you, mm -hmm. and in part, I believe it. For there must also be friction, fashions among you, that those who are approved may be recognized among you. Therefore, when you come together in one place, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, each one takes his own supper ahead of others, and one is hungry, and another is drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing? So when you partake of your food without your brothers, you despise the house of God. Because food is more than food when it's now assembled amongst the church of God. 
Okay. Food is food. However, food becomes more than food when it's now assembled amongst the house of God. Go ahead, keep going. What shall I say to you? So I praise you in this. I did not praise you. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. So I received this from the Lord. He totally dismissed all of the apostles. Peter, James, John, Bartholomew, Matthias. He said, that's great, but what I received, I received from who? The Lord. From the Lord. That's hard for people to process. God circumvented an entire, all of the people that walked with him. He said, you know what? Take, we're going to take them, put them to the shelf for a second and let me deal with you. We can't process a lot of times the idea that God would take a man and do something with him like that. But they didn't understand that Paul was a location. So in order for him to be a location, he needs certain things for that system and for that structure to be built up into a great city that's set on a hill. Do you understand? Yes. Yeah. God's not limited by hierarchy. At all. Yes. We imagine so. God's not limited by hierarchy at all. God doesn't have to use, God doesn't have to pass through me to make sure you get something. A lot of times he will. But there's a lot of times where he also won't. You understand? Yes. It's like Sean. I told Sean, I said, the reason I love Sean is because only people, only thing people will ever be able to see Sean for, for the most part, is a rapper. Mm-hmm. But Sean is like an iceberg. The strength of an iceberg is never at the tip, it's at everything that it holds in the foundation. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's what an iceberg is. The beauty of it is the tip. Pause. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I mean, I figured they were playing around earlier, so you know, I thought we would have a get a chat chat back. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't stop laughing earlier. <laughs> I'm just saying. As my New Yorkers say, "Hey, yo." <laughs> <laughs> Y'all can't judge me. I said to pause myself. I got it out. <laughs> Y'all can't judge me. I got the I got the pause out. <laughs> the judgment is when you don't get it out. <laughs> he said in my boozy voice, come on, man. <laughs> but I was using that example with Sean that the surface of the iceberg is a better way to put that oh right the very surface of the iceberg is what man beholds but they don't understand everything that goes into keeping that iceberg what it is that's the foundation that's that which cannot be seen that's very much a lot like myself everyone sees the surface but they don't understand the true depth of where a man has been with God mm-hmm. you understand yes. if any man's going to be an iceberg there's going to be depth and people most times can't see that so I was using that with Sean in a sense where I say, hey man, you know, the beauty of it is God's going to usually do some great things. The sad part about it is it's going to take men with eyes to see to understand who you truly are. It's going to take men with eyes to see to understand who you truly are. I was sitting at Starbucks today and I was, um, I, I had my Bible there and I was sitting there reading. And then there was another guy, you know, of course he got the big, thick Bible. You know, he just looked like a preacher. <laughs> Everything about him said preacher. <laughs> I said, "Oh, I know what this is." Now I'm sitting there with my jeans. My jeans. I mean, he's looking at me like a nigga, right? On you, right? Mm-hmm. But the problem is, I understand that only you can only see me if you have eyes, mm-hmm. and you can only hear me if you have ears to hear. Mm-hmm. Because I'm gonna say some things that rub you in a way you can be like, "What?" And you gonna look at me and be like, "Oh no, that's not whatever," mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Because we've traditionalized to think that men. Men of God look a certain way, mm-hmm. right? So we look, oh, men of God dress a certain way, so we're looking for three-piece suits. Mm-hmm. Or we're looking for, you know, them to speak a certain way. What's up, doc? Or whatever, all that church jargon they talk about. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you're going to be deeply disappointed sitting with me and I'm talking about Paul's. <laughs> 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 but the problem is you can't see, you don't know I'm an iceberg. Mm-hmm. You don't understand that I'm a tree. Mm-hmm. 
You don't understand that I'm a city. You don't understand that I'm a location. You don't understand that I'm a river. And so that's part of it. Now, Paul was very much the same way, which is why Jesus had to go and circumvent all the people he commissioned in the ministry. Jesus was the one who circumvented all the ones whom he chose. That's very hard for people to process. All of the men whom he chose, he circumvented them when he went and got Paul. He says, hey, man, this is great. Listen, I know I taught y'all something, but y'all not even ready for this. Let me deal with him. Which means that even in our understanding with God, that it takes time to be able to process new things that God is doing. Mm -hmm. Why? They weren't able, they wouldn't, if Paul would have came to him and said, the Lord put it in my heart to do this, they would have stopped him. If, they, if he would have came and said, the Lord put it in my heart to do this, they would have stopped him. The Lord put it in my heart to go to the Gentiles. They're unclean people. We don't speak to them. These are still very much culturally racist men. Culturally, not, not wicked in heart, but just culturally. That's why we have to be more kingdom than we are culture. Amen. That's why we have to be more kingdom than we are culture. So culturally, these, mans had a lot, these men had a lot of things wrong. The same men who walk with God, being Jesus. Jesus, God in the flesh. Mm -hmm. They walk with Jesus, yet Jesus then circumvents every last one of them when he saves Paul. And if Paul were to go to them and say, I feel like God is calling me to do this, they would have shut him down. Mm -hmm. I feel like God is sending me to this group of people. They would not have been able to process it. I feel like God is doing this with me. They would not have been able to process it. So God then removes him from all of those who do and have walked with him and does something totally new with him. Mm. That's the whole behold, I do a new thing. Mm. You know, new means new for a reason. Mm. Because we get married to old ways. Mm. So we can't process new wine. Mm. You see that? God is pouring out new wine, but he knows the disciples can't process that yet. The apostles can't process that yet. So then... He totally removes him and he begins to deal with him and work through him. And when Paul comes back, he says, these things that I received, I received from God for the Lord revealed them to me. He never had a conversation with the apostles about what communion was like. Mm -hmm. He never had a conversation with the apostles about what happened in that upper room when he had the Lord's table with them. Mm -hmm. Never. The first conversation he has is when he finally goes up years later to see the apostle Paul, the mm -hmm. apostle Peter, excuse me. That's the first conversation he has. And even then, you see Peter, you see Paul correcting Peter about how he deals with the Gentiles. Why? Because he now had greater revelation. It's hard for people to process, but it's very true. So I said it to say, get over your old ways because God can do new things. Yes. That's the whole, behold, I do a new thing. Behold, I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. The whole premise in learning is that you have to throw away what you think you know so you can receive what you do not know. Yes. Amen? Amen. All right. Go ahead. Keep reading. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he gave and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Yes. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, Whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the blood, guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. So let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we judge ourselves, we will not be judged. That's good right there. Okay. So 
the Lord's body, which he likened unto his bread, when he said that that same very night, he took bread, broke it, gave thanks, his blood. He said that if you partake of this unworthily, you eat and you drink damnation unto yourself, not discerning the Lord's body. Now, if you go back a few, ver a few verses, this is what Paul was telling them that he was dealing with them about. They were eating food, not aware that when bread is present amongst you, that now the Lord's body is amongst us. Mm -hmm. So the bread is there amongst the Lord's table, but you think it's just there to consume. Mm -hmm. That's why he said, <clears throat> does not every man has his own home that he can eat in? Yes. To us to sit down is one thing, but for us to share the Lord's table is something totally different. Mm -hmm. That's why I told you I don't do it. Because I understand the power of it. And if people take it wrong, I understand what it can do. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't see me just do it haphazardly. That's why you don't see it. Why? If you sit, if you set the table down and you think it's just to start eating, you've already missed it. If you set the table and think it's just to start eating, you've already missed it. Because once the table is set, that food no longer represents that food. Remember, I've taught you about the word tokenism. That bread has now become more than just bread. That wine has become more than just wine. But if you sit there and think it's just to have fellowship, and we should eat and we should have fellowship, and we need to. They continue daily, steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and the prayer, breaking of bread and fellowship of the saints. So that's a part of what we do. However, when we're talking about the Lord's table, when that table is now instituted, that bread is no longer just bread. Mm -hmm. That bread has now become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when men begin to grab at it and take it as though it's just a meal and they're hungry or looking to appease themselves, they don't understand that they're eating damnation unto themselves. Mm -hmm. Because they've not properly considered that this is Jesus in whom I am partaking. Mm -hmm. And Jesus will be partaking of no one haphazardly. Mm -hmm. No one. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> now, there's so much more to teach in that, but we won't teach that because that will just lead us to only dealing with the Lord's table. Now, the next thing in light of bread is you have to understand when John read, when John Jubilee read John, because that's the tongue twister, right? <laughs> When John Jubilee read John, he told us that this is the bread that your fathers ate in the wilderness, yet they died. Yes. That bread is what we call the bread of angels. Mm -hmm. That bread, which we call, somebody put that in, y'all put that in chat for me. The bread of angels. Make sure y'all still with me. Oh, we got time. We almost out of time. I love how the faithfuls all comment, and then you have like thirty plus people that are just there. That's always cool. They further building up my shadow theory. Yeah. Now, when we talk about the bread of angels, what a lot of people think or what a lot of people don't know is that the angelic beings actually partake of food. They actually eat. They actually have food and meals that they partake of the same way you and I do. The only difference is, remember I was taught you that within the heavens, food is not consumed for the purpose of nourishment. Food is consumed for the purpose of information. Mm -hmm. Food is also consumed for the purpose of impartation. Mm -hmm. Literally. So there are angelic beings that have bread that is portioned out to them according to their rank and according to their assignments. Mm -hmm. So there are angelic beings that have bread that is portioned out to them. Remember I told you about the portions of heaven. Mm -hmm. There's bread that is portioned out to angelic beings for the very purpose of them receiving strength, for them receiving grace, and for them receiving speed to accomplish their assignment. Mm -hmm. Literally. That's what the bread of angels is. 
<clears throat> now, when we talk about the manna that they received in the wilderness, this is what God chose to feed them with. Yet they despised the very nature and purpose in which God was giving to them. Mm -hmm. Because remember I told you the bread of angels does what? It gives you grace. I'm sorry. The bread of angels gives you grace. It gives you speed. It gives you strength to accomplish an assignment. Mm -hmm. The bread that they ate as they wandered for 40 years was supposed to give them strength, grace, and speed to accomplish where they were supposed to go. Mm -hmm. Yet they missed it. And God chose instead that I'll cause them to wander. Alshonda asked a good question. She says, is heavenly food made out of light? Now, <laughs> in light of the bread, in light of the bread which comes down from heaven, because manna also is bread that comes down from heaven. It's just not the bread <coughs> which comes down from heaven. Amen? Amen. So bread which comes down from heaven and the bread which comes down from heaven are two different things. Mm -hmm. The bread which comes down from heaven is the Lord Jesus. The bread of angels is not the Lord Jesus. Okay. okay. Now, dealing with the bread, I, I didn't. I, w I wasn't gonna mute it, but dealing with bread, there was a unique dynamic in light of the manna, because every day God would rain down what fresh manna, and if you're not aware, let me teach you. Every day God will rain down fresh right. manna. Fresh manna. Now today's provision is not good for tomorrow's provision. Okay? So today's bread is not good for tomorrow's bread. So some people are eating stale and crusty and moldy revelation when it doesn't suffice for today. That bread that you received 10 years ago is good, but it doesn't work for today. Mm. So it's kind of like the internet. Jesus said, go into the highways, byways, and go into the highways, byways, and it was Walmart, I can't remember. However, in light of when he said, go out into the highways and byways, the highways and byways was old bread for Peter, James, John, right? Peter, James, John, all the fellas. That's old bread at this point. It's stale. Mm -hmm. That bread is not good for today. Mm -hmm. However, today he says, go into the highways and the byways. And the highways and byways are Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, X Spaces, Twitch, mm -hmm. whatever else there's stuff that I don't know. So what happens? If I pitch my tent around yesterday's bread, I will become stale too in what I'm partaking of. Mm. And not only do you become stale, but you become obsolete in light of service to God. Mm. You're doing it, but you're doing it as a thing of the past. I love the meme with Paul when it says that, and then one, one millennial made it to heaven and he finally got to talk with Paul. And then Paul's like, I know you killed it with the internet. Uh -huh. I know you did. Mm -hmm. I was sending letters. I was writing. I know you killed the internet. What did you do? He says, oh, we just sent memes to everyone. Mm -hmm. And Paul was ready to slap him. <laughs> 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 Paul was ready to smack fire out of him. Yeah. I can tell you a lot of people, if God would give you eyes to see, you don't know how many Holy Ghost slaps you get from Jesus mm -hmm. because you picture your ten around old bread and stale rivers. Old bread and stagnant rivers. Oh. You pitch your tent around old crusty bread and stagnant rivers. Crusty bread. You got to pause. <laughs> I'm going to break your teeth trying to partake of that old revelation. Yeah. 
trying to take that old way of doing things. God says, behold, I do a new thing. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. Behold, I do a new thing. Now, in light of that, like I said, people pitch their tents around stale bread and stagnant rivers. A lot of times people don't understand that the rivers and the bread is closely correlated. Mm-hmm. Closely correlated. That's something that we'll teach about at another time when we teach about streams and rivers. But the rivers are stale because there's no inflow and there's no outflow. Mm -hmm. Just to help you understand why a river becomes stagnant. Mm -hmm. A river becomes stagnant because there's no inflow and there's no outflow. It exists as a body all unto itself. Mm -hmm. It exists as a body all unto itself. Mm -hmm. If we were to equate that into the ocean, that's called what? A dead sea. And if you ever look at the actual Dead Sea, everything that enters into its water dies. Mm -hmm. Every life source that enters into it dies. And the reason it dies is because it's the same way. There's no outflow. Mm -hmm. So because there's no outflow, everything that comes inside of it dies. This thing is a channel that should flow two ways. Mm -hmm. So you have to ask yourself, if you're an island unto yourself, you're probably a dead man walking. If you're an island unto yourself, you're probably a dead man walking. You just don't know it. Because everywhere that the river flows, it brings life. But if there's no inflow and there's no outflow, there's no life source working through that. That's kind of like the whole one body. Yeah, that's kind of how that works, just by the way. (laughs) Like... My body works with your body because we're one body and we flow together unto the river of God. Yeah, that whole thing. So I'm um, just saying. But let's go. Where we where we at? <laughs> we was in First Corinthians. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. We moved on to the bread of angels. I was talking about stagnant rivers. But in light of that, because <laughs> I, I was about to go in. <laughs> I was gonna start going. I was gonna start going in. So let me get myself together. <laughs> but in light of that, the bread of angels imparts grace, it imparts strength, it imparts speed to accomplish an assignment. Mm-hmm. Michael has bread that he receives. Gabriel has bread that he receives. Raphael has bread that he receives. All of the angels have bread that they receive mm-hmm. for a purpose. <laughs> he was about to go fire by force. I had to stop myself because it was. You notice I got like I like guys that like jump, 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 and once I get there, it's just mm-hmm. <laughs> detrimental to me and everyone else. I just had to. But the bread that angels receive gives them strength for their assignment. Now, as the children of Israel, God will rain down fresh manna every day. Mm-hmm. But as He rained down fresh manna, it was only good for that day. It was only good for that day. Mm-hmm. It wasn't good for the next day. Mm-hmm. As he rained down manna on the next day, it was only good for that day. So you could only gather what was sufficient for that day. Mm-hmm. Why? Because if you gather too much, it would go bad anyway because you can only partake of so much in a day. Mm-hmm. This is why I tell you don't do those 365-day Bible plans. Why? Because what you get for that day is sufficient for that day. Yes. <laughs> You're trying to gather all of this stuff and now you're just working through something when God has enough bread for you every day. You understand? Yes. God has enough bread for you every single day. But you can't be a hoarder. Because then you gather up all of this stuff to yourself and now you carry around stale bread. Like, look what I have. <laughs> and it's moldy and it serves no good. Mm-hmm. Don't put that. 365 Bible plans don't equal croutons. It's just a more better way. Okay? So let me help you understand. 365-day Bible plans do not equal croutons. Mm -hmm. Do not equal croutons. Because somebody somewhere is being blessed. Mm -hmm. Somebody somewhere is being edified. Somebody somewhere is being enlightened. He said that the interest of his word, it gives light. Mm -hmm. It didn't say whether it's from a 365-day Bible plan or a one-day plan. Light is light. Mm-hmm. Amen. So you know, I'm all for the joking and the fun, but we're not gonna we're not gonna speak stupid. 
Amen. Amen. We're not going to speak dumb. Okay. Amen. I'm trying to get that. Because that was stupid. Somebody somewhere is partaking and receiving of that. All I'm doing is saying that there's a more excellent way. But it doesn't mean that there's another way somebody can go to. Show what if they want to take the harder path, let them. As long as we get to the same destination, which is Christ, that's all that matters. Okay? Now, there's a fresh bread for every day. There's a fresh bread for every day. That bread that is fresh for every day is so that your dependency is upon God day by day. Mm -hmm. The manner that you receive for today is not enough for tomorrow, which should leave you dependent upon him for tomorrow's portion. Mm -hmm. Give me today my what? Daily Daily bread. bread. You see how this thing works? Now, he didn't say, he didn't ask for it. He said, give me. The reason you demand things to be given because it's justly due to you. Mm. You only begin to pray about things that you feel are not due to you. Mm. Father, I ask you for mercy. Why? Because it's not due to me. Mm. He chooses to give it to me because he is merciful. Mm. You understand? Mm. But when I say give me my daily bread, I understand that I've been partaking of this fresh manna for a long time. Why? Because it's my just portion because Jesus went to the cross for me. It's my just portion. Mm -hmm. So that's in light of when I say they gather bread every day. And then there's certain windows and certain times where God released a special grace or special dynamic upon that bread. Mm -hmm. Kind of like when they would gather bread on the day before the Sabbath, it would be enough for them for that day and the following. Because remember, they weren't, they wouldn't gather bread on the Sabbath. Mm-hmm. So what they gathered the day before the Sabbath had a sustaining grace to it that carried them from that day and the following day. Mm-hmm. So there are windows and times where what God can give you will sustain you for a future season also. Amen. You understand? Oh, we're out of time. Um, amen. There is <laughs> more grace. <laughs> so... There are windows of time where what God will give will sustain you for a future season also. But it has to be that God has put grace upon that for it to sustain itself. Mm-hmm. All right. Carl said it. Man does not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God is the word of his mouth, heavenly bread. Yeah, because it proceeds from his mouth. Mm-hmm. He likened what would come from him to bread. Amen. Mm-hmm. So you have a bread which you partake of that can sustain you, but you need a fresh grace for tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You need a fresh revelation for tomorrow. You need a fresh insight for tomorrow. You need a fresh provision for tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Unless you receive special grace, which has special dynamics to it, like Elijah. Because Elijah was fed by the angels mm-hmm. but when the angels fed him that food carried him and the strength of it for 40 days mm-hmm. you see the difference mm-hmm. every day the children have eaten for their provisions for their strength for their sustenance and those sorts of things yet Elijah sits down with the angels and the angels that come to him bake them a meal in such a way that it carries him in strength for 40 days mm-hmm. you see The bread that angels give will give you strength for your assignment. Mm -hmm. Elijah received strength to carry on for 40, to run in that strength for 40 days. But that's because the bread that comes is for strength, for speed, and to help you accomplish your assignment, also to bring you impartation. Amen? Amen. Jesus was also strengthened by the angels. Jesus was also strengthened by the angels. Mm -hmm. Then after he resisted the devil and overcame temptation, then he too, the angels came and ministered unto him. What do you think they brought him? Mm -hmm. They weren't just sitting there talking to him. Mm -hmm. You see? 
they brought him something. And that something carried him in strength. You see that even in the garden. Jesus is sweating profusely like blood inside of the garden. When the angels come to strengthen him, we don't see Jesus sweat blood anymore. Why? What did they bring him? Strength. He said that he is sweating profusely to the point of blood. Do you know what it takes to, for that to happen? Deep anguish. Deep anguish. Yet, when the angels come, we never hear another moment of him being scared or needing strength. He needed physical strength, but meaning actual strength to carry on. It was never needed. He says, I give myself. Mm -hmm. You can't take my life. I give it. Yeah. Thinking about it, he told it to beware the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He basically said that their religious doctrine was like bad bread. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. I said that. I taught about that in the, um, the spirit of the Pharisees. Yeah. The spirit of the Pharisees. Beware of the leaven of Herod. It says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. I won't say what I want to say about the leaven of Herod, but beware of it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because I don't want people to think I'm, I'm, I'm shooting jabs or nothing, because I'm not. Oh, okay. I got you. I, I'm not, but I don't want it to be mistaken as that. Mm -hmm. Trying that new thing of committing myself to their hearts. Maybe God will give me more grace. <laughs> so Elijah is carried in that strength also. Jesus is also carried in strength. And you too can be carried in strength. Because Jesus told you, pray after this manner. Give me this day my daily bread. Mm -hmm. When is the last time you ask God, Father, I want my portion that is for today? Probably not. The portion that's due to me, and let me get that. My kids don't wake up and say, can I have breakfast? They say, what can I eat? Can I have this? They don't wake up and say, can I have breakfast? Why? Because they, they already know that's their provision. So you two in the same manner need to know if he's a good father. Nothing like who we are in a class all by himself. He too has daily provisions for you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So the bread of angels, like I said, bread empowers you for your assignment. It also empowers them, meaning the angels, for their assignment. The bread gives them strength, speed, and grace. This is how the angels function. They partake of bread, which gives them strength, speed, and grace. Mm -hmm. And you two, in the same manner, have to ask yourself, whose bread have you been partaking of? Because what, is, what do people say? You are what you eat. Yes. You are what you eat. Now, Sean asked a question. She said, is the angels what is it made of light? If you lack light, it's because you are what you eat. Mm. Mm. I'm, answering, I'm answering her question without, without saying mm -hmm. yes or no. <laughs> you are what you eat. But I'll take it a step further. You are whose table you eat at. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You are whose table you eat at. Now, this is the next thing I want to show you. This is something that God taught me. But I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget to say it. But when a man has certain things working in his life spiritually, it most times can be pointed to a lack of receiving of the provisions of God. Now, in light of what we're talking about with manna, I'm going to deal with two things specifically. When you see a man that is deeply delayed, deeply delayed, or woman, woman also, mm -hmm. let's say, a woman who should be married, but then she's well into her 60s and not married, well into her 50s and not married. There's obviously a deep spirit of delay that's there. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily working in them, but it's present and affecting them. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not putting demons inside of people like, they got a devil. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the presence of a spirit can also work in a person's life. Mm -hmm. And 
whatever you see, deep delay or extensive delay and extensive lack, it's due to a lack of man in a person's life, mm -hmm. spiritually. When you see deep spiritual delay, even in the growth of a person's spiritual development, it's because they have not been partaking of manna. Because the Father dishes out our daily provisions, but if you don't ask it, he's not just shoving it down your throat. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. If you don't partake of it, he's not just shoving it down your throat. For a season, it's cute. Like our little son, our, our youngest son, we had to make him eat. But the other two, we're not looking to see if they ate, if they ate, they ate, if they didn't, they didn't. That's their choice. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, to a certain point, we have to make sure they eat, right? But I'm just showing you the concept is that it's your portion, but if you don't go get it, that's on you. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yes. And when you see deep delay inside of a person, it's due to a lack of man inside of their life. It's due to a lack of fresh bread that gives them grace, that gives them speed, that gives them strength to move on into an assignment. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's what it is. It's due to that. And when you see lack, you ever <coughs> notice that poverty is equated to lack of bread? Poverty is equated to a lack of bread. That's what the scripture says. I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed beg for bread. Lack is directly tied to bread. Spiritually. Lack is directly tied to bread. Now, I'm sure some of y'all will be ready to get some bread after this fast now. <laughs> ready to get some, some earthly manna. Right? But according to the scriptures... Lack was directly tied to bread. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed beg for bread. Mm -hmm. Which means that the righteous man doesn't have to beg for it because it's his daily provision. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes. It's his daily provision. What'd you say? You, you've never seen the righteous forsaken? <laughs> Our daughter was with us. Jonathan. John, get me John chapter 6 again. But I want you to go to the two fish and the five loaves. YouTube, you still with me? We're going to wrap this up in like, what is that? I'm getting ready to close. I'm going to wrap this up in like 10 minutes. Mute my mic for a second so they don't so they don't hear this. You got John 6, John? Yes. John Jubilee, you got John 6, chapter 6? Yes. Thank you. I want you to read um, when the multitudes come to him and then he uh, feeds the 5,000, not including men, well, not including women and children. John chapter 6, start on verse 1. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Mm -hmm. Then a great multitude followed him. Because they saw his signs, which he performed on those who were deceased. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Mm -hmm. Now the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. Mm -hmm. near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes, and seeing a great multitude coming towards him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread, that these may eat? But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth for bread is not significant for them, that every one of them 
may have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five bar barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? Then Jesus said, They checked my man out. They said, hey, man, one guy, what they said the last time, a fish basket. You know what they said, Quentin and them. <laughs> Then Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So they, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaf. And when he had given thanks, he, dis he distributed them to the disciples. And disciples to those sitting down. And likewise of the fish as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, Buffet. he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. Therefore, they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. Perfect. That's what I want to write there. Now, he said there's two fish and there's five loaves of bread. And then he tells them, make them sit down. When he tells them, make them sit down, there is a system and a process by which you access heavenly miracles. There's a system and a process by which you access heavenly miracles. Him saying to them, him telling them, make them sit down. Part of that was he was bringing the disciples into the miracle realm. Part of that was him bringing the disciples into the miracle realm. Very similar to what Elijah tells the prophet, Elisha tells the prophet, go and dip yourself inside of this river. Part of the miracle realm accessing unto him was him going and doing what he was told to do. Yeah. Part of that. He's opening them up. It's not as much as it is. It's not as much about making them sit down as it is about bringing the disciples into the miracle realm. Now, the disciples did not know yet. Jesus already knew what he would do. It said that he tested Philip to see what he would say. Yes. It said that Jesus lifted up. He was with his disciples, speaking with him, and then he lifted up his eyes and he saw the multitude coming unto them, and then he asked Philip, "Philip, what shall we do?" And then Philip answered, and it says that he tested Philip to see what he would say. However, he already knew what he would do. Mm -hmm. Jesus knew what he would do the moment he saw them. He knew that there's a young lad with two fish and five loaves. And he also knew that there's not enough to take care of the provisions for them. Neither is there anywhere we can go buy bread for where we are out here in this open space. Mm -hmm. But then he tells the disciples, you go make them sit down. Then he says, he takes the fish, he breaks it, he gives thanks, and then he distributes it to the apostles and then tells the apostles, distribute it unto them. Now, what happens is, remember I told you that there's holes inside of the word of God that God is looking to fill, mm -hmm. but he can only fill them those who have the right meditations. Mm -hmm. What happens is, each disciple receives a basket. Each apostle receives his own basket. His own basket is broken only into 12 pieces. However, each piece is multiplying as he's handing it out to the people. Each apostle is responsible for the miracle of the group of people that they were serving. The group of people was divided up into 12. And each one had a quadrant that they were responsible for. And as they handed it, it was broken down. If Jesus wanted to do it, all he had to do was tell him, tell him stand in a single file line and just bring him past here. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't just about Jesus. It's about bringing everyone else alongside also. Yes. If he just says, hey, guys, watch this. They're not truly partaking in it. You see? Now he's bringing them alongside. You take these baskets. You notice there was 12 baskets because there's 12 apostles. Mm -hmm. And when they collect the fragments, how many baskets are there? 12, 12 baskets collected by the 12 apostles. You understand? Yes. 
if he didn't make them line up in a single file line, he could have easily said, make them line up in a single file line. Every time they come, they can dip their hands and get what they want and be done with it. No. He brought them alongside also. Mm-hmm. Remember I told you, every experience is an impartation that you receive. Just like when they went up onto the mountain of transfiguration, then they came and says, they saw Moses and they saw Elijah. And then a few chapters later, they said, do you want us to call down fire from heaven on them? The reason they said this is because they knew they could do it after they saw Elijah. Mm-hmm. They had read about Elijah, but once they met Elijah, they knew the grace that he has, I now have also. Yeah. The grace that he has, excuse me, I now have also. Mm-hmm. So when Jesus has them multiply the bread, take these baskets and feed them. When Jesus has them multiply the bread, they now know we can do this at another moment's time if we need to. Mm-hmm. At another moment's time if we need to, not just because we will to big difference also miracles are based upon need not upon want Mm -hmm. okay miracles are based upon need not upon want and just to make something very 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 clear I want to make something very clear because there was a statement that was said to me And the statement was that God is not counting miracles. He's counting disciples. Duh. Like, duh. What else would he be counting? However, how are you going to make a disciple? The man that's at the gate called beautiful. When Peter tells him, look at me. And gives him strength. Stand up in the name of Jesus. And it says that his legs were strengthened and his ankles were strengthened. What did that man do? He cleaved on to Peter. He fo- he began to be a follower of Peter. Yes. You understand? Yes. Your words are not enough. Power has to go with your words. The power signifies that God is with you because the other man can talk also. If both of you are talking, God is with one. God is not with the other. Come on. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. Is it is it that it's an everyday thing? And I was telling someone, I said, well, you know, the dynamic is a lot of the stuff that we do, I don't talk about. I don't put it on the internet. I don't post it. I don't do it. I spend more time teaching about Jesus. Yeah. Hundred times last year, two hundred times this year, not including the invitation that we probably won't take. Jesus, 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 you say miracles five times, like, oh, it's miracles, miracles, miracles. Just, just say, God, I want to move that way also. Just say, just say that. What do you mean? Say, just say that. Just say that. You know we owe everything a meme. What'd that meme say? Power for power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had no plan on talking about that, but I, but in all honesty, I want us to understand that mm-hmm. everything is to point people back to God and nothing else. Yes. Yes. Everything is to point people to the Lord Jesus, nothing else. Even then, if it goes away, you see every instance where the disciples still turn men back to God. What shows you people aren't truly listening because they're listening. You've always heard me say, the only one we look to is the Lord Jesus yes. because he is the only one who can reveal the Father. Yes. So, you know, just, just wanted to put that out there. Because, you know, we got 60 people, but only like 30 people commented. So I know where the other 30 people came from. Yeah. But <laughs> now, in light of that, back to we talking about bread, right? Here's the next thing about bread. And some of the Lord taught me about it. There's two types of bread. Two types of bread. Two types of bread. Hear what I'm saying? There are two types of bread. Y'all put some twos in the chat. There are two types of bread. We'll wrap up here because I, I know y'all getting tired. Mm-mm. One day God will increase your capacity and we'll teach all day long and I'll show you something. Mm. I mean that. One day I will. Mm. 
My ability to teach all night long is a grace that came from somewhere. Who else taught all night long in the scriptures? Paul, teaching all night long, and a young man fell asleep in the window. <laughs> yes. Jason, taught all night long, and Janika and Felicia sleep on the couch and in their chairs. <laughs> you ever notice in the beginning of teaching Felicia yapping real, yapping real strong? Mm hmm. Yes. All of that. That part. <laughs> yeah. Ten, uh, ten minutes in. Mm -hmm. mm, yes. <laughs> that part. Three hours later. Silence. <laughs> I'm really worried about the school of life. I am. I don't know how. I, don't, I just don't know. We might need to start in the daytime. I'm just playing with you guys. I'm just making light. But there's two types of bread. I was just kind of pulling some air out of the room. There's two types of bread, okay? And these are the two types of bread. There's bread that is common. There's bread that is common. And then there's bread that is holy. There's bread that is common. And then there is bread that is holy. In order to access that which is holy, a man has to have a certain lifestyle. A man has to conduct himself a certain way. A man has to establish himself and carry himself in a certain manner. And in that manner, he can have access to the bread which is holy. Okay? The bread which is common, every man can receive. Now, when I say every man, I'm meaning every Christian. I'm not talking about every man separate from God. I'm talking about bread that comes from God. I'm not talking about bread like common bread in the world. I'm talking about bread that comes from God. There's bread that is common, and then there's bread that is holy. Mm -hmm. Which type of bread you receive is based upon your conduct. So I know um, Hiram yesterday put the eyeballs in the chat when I was talking about Bishop T.D. Jakes. Right? I wasn't giving him a pass on sin at all. So on the flip side, just as much as people may have thought I was giving him a pass on sin, they will also hear me say that the bread which is holy, if his conduct is wrong, he can't access it. You see? What Daniel said, perfectly balanced. <laughs> we balanced. The bread which is holy can only be received based upon pure conduct. Pure, P-U-R-E, purity. Mm -hmm. That bread ha can only be received and dished out based upon one's conduct. Amen? Amen. So remember I said how you live determines where you reside within the heavens? Mm -hmm. How you conduct yourself determines the light that you can receive from God also. Mm -hmm. So when you hear a man carrying a certain level of revelation... Don't worry about what they look like. Just know their life in private is a certain conduct because he didn't get that by study. You understand? Mm -hmm. There goes that for how a man looks because I know we base things about how people look, whether they're, they're tattoos or they're this or they're that. If a man carries a certain measure of light, meaning things that he has received, mm -hmm. and when you hear him talk about them, that's all that you only get that by a certain conduct. Mm -hmm. So there's two types of bread. The bread which is holy and the bread which is pure. Amen. Amen. All right. John, give me first Samuel chapter 21, please. So there goes that for sin. <laughs> Amen. Put some eyeballs in the chat for me. I couldn't get my eyeballs up there yesterday. <laughs> That's why I said just perfectly balanced, though. Perfectly balanced. They don't know, but I was just kidding, y'all. I was just joking. <laughs> First Samuel chapter 21, and uh, let me see what verse we want to read. John 
down. Let's do one through six. But these words might trip you up, so take your time reading. Okay. Yeah, you're right, Elder Antoine. Come on, let's just for one good time for clarity's sake, let's give it to him. Sin <laughs> is bad. bad. All right, let's just, just for, for for one, you know, just to make sure we all on the same page here. For the other thirty who not commenting, we want to make sure they understand. <laughs> yeah, John. So let's do First Samuel twenty one. However, some of them words may trip you up, so just take your time when you're reading it. Okay. I know it because they trip me up. So it ain't personal. <laughs> verse 7, chapter 21, starting verse 1. Now David came to Nob, to Ahimelech, Ahimelech mm -hmm. the priest. And Ahimelech was afraid when he met David and said to him, Why are you alone and no one is with you? So David said to Ahimelech, Ahimelech. Uh, eliminate. I told you. I told you. <laughs> eliminate. <laughs> I, told, I told you it will get you. <laughs> That's one of the ones you got to read it each time. You know, when something you read, you know what it is, and you try to just do it. Yeah. No, you got to read that, baby. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let me let start it. back at verse two. I'm just picking with you. So David said to Elimelech, the priest, the king has ordered me on some business and said to me, do not let anyone know anything about the business business on which I send you or what I have commanded you. And I have directed my young men to such and such a place. Now, let's start there. The <laughs> Y'all see? <laughs> oh, he made me lightheaded. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> They're like Friday. Fight back, son. Fight back, son. <laughs> it's okay, John. You live to fight another scripture. <laughs> you went on Friday. Fight back. Get up, Craig. Get up, Craig. Y'all type, come on, John. Come on, John. Come on, John. Come on, John. <laughs> come on, John. <laughs> This is how much we believe in John. Go ahead and do it one more time. <laughs> one through two. <laughs> Come on, John. Come on, John. <laughs> you, hey, we need. I know why she didn't tell him to read. Go ahead. You got to stir your man up. <laughs> His spirit wasn't stirred up. That's why. 